Today on Ham Radio Q&A Extra, we'll take a look at low-pass filters or TBI filters. So please stay tuned for more. Hi, I'm Joe, KB9CJX for Ham Radio Q&A Extra. Uh, don't worry, Michael KB9BBR is alive and well, uh, probably to contrary belief. Uh, I'm just coming in and we're doing a little short segment today. Uh, today we're going to be talking about low-pass filters or RFI or TBI filters. Uh, these filters were common at one point in time, not so much anymore, and I'll tell you why in a little bit, but let's talk about what they are. Uh, these TBI filters or low-pass filters were for transmitters uh, that would generally attenuate frequencies outside of the HF bands, usually above 30 megahertz. Uh, the reason why is that, as you may know, that our TV band starts above 6 meters, or at 54 megahertz, uh, and could be susceptible to interference from 3rd and 5th harmonics from HF transmitters, uh, generally from uh, 3.5 megahertz to 30 megahertz. If you take the 3rd or 5th harmonic, you'll see that it falls right within that TV band between 54 and uh, 87 megahertz. Uh, so that could cause some problems with your neighbors. Um, there used to be stories of neighbors who uh, couldn't watch Jackie Gleason while they ate. Uh, quite a problem, and it usually led to some uh, strained relationships across the fence. So, they invented these, these low-pass filters, which are basically a tuned circuit. Uh, it's just, uh, both of these are mainly just uh, inductors in series and in parallel, uh, which allow frequencies under 30 megahertz to pass through them without any attenuation. But once you get over 30 megahertz, uh, the attenuation kicks in and it pretty much cuts those frequencies out, or at least brings them down to levels where they don't cause interference with your neighbor's tip television. Uh, a couple of models that I have here, this one is an old Barker and Williamson model. Uh, over here, this one this is from Bell Industries. Again, these are both fairly old, uh, but realistically, there's no moving parts. It's uh, just literally a tuned circuit, so just inductors. Uh, and these are also built to handle quite a bit of power, uh, somewhere between 1,500 watts in this model, 2,000 watts on this model. Uh, this one even says that it has uh, attenuation of 80 dB or greater, over 41 megahertz. So. Uh, that will pretty much kill anything outside of the HF band. So let's put these over on a um, oscilloscope. We'll run some signals through them and we'll take a look and see what they do. So what I've set up here is our function generator right now has an output of 15 megahertz running through the low pass filter and uh, the output is being fed to our scope. As you can see here on the scope, um, let me move over here that the output really is untouched right now. It is uh, still a pure sine wave. And as I increase the frequency, no change so far. Uh, this band, or this uh, low-pass filter has a cutoff point of 30 megahertz. And unfortunately, my signal generator has a cutoff of 30 megahertz. It won't go any higher. So as you can see here, um, no major uh, attenuation of the signal so far. Uh, what I'm going to do next is we'll set it up with a, a signal that has harmonics above 30 megahertz and we'll take a look into that and see what the filter does. Okay, so what we've done here is we've set up our uh, rig expert antenna analyzer as a signal generator. The rig expert can only generate a signal up to 10 megahertz. Anything above that, it uses a harmonic. So for frequencies above the 30 megahertz that the low-pass filter would generally attenuate, it's actually using a fifth harmonic, which is perfect. Um, if we were using this on a HF uh, rig that a transmitter that had uh, bad spurs at a third or a fifth harmonic, basically we would be doing the same thing here. Um, so uh, if you look at the scope, the uh, yellow line or channel number one is the raw output from the antenna analyzer, and as you can see that uh, it is a combination of the uh, first and third, uh, first, third, and fifth, I believe, uh, harmonics, creating that ugly, ugly picture. Uh, below it, you'll see a very nice sine wave there. That is the filtered output coming through the low-pass filter. And as you can see, it has removed those harmonics above 30 megahertz. 
Uh, so quite a drastic difference. Additionally, what you'll also notice is that the signal coming through the low-pass filter is 180 degrees out of phase from the original signal. Um, these filters will, in fact, uh, do a phase shift. Um, so you do have to keep that in mind. Um, sometimes it's not a big issue, other times it can uh, create problems depending on what the filter is being used for. And as, if I can go ahead here and change the frequency, I'll go down to something above the, the let's go to 20. And I'll auto reset that so we get a better picture on the scope. Now the filter does change the output of the waveform somewhat. Um, there are still some harmonics that are filtered out, but for the most part at 20 MHz, uh, that's using the third harmonic of the 10 MHz um, signal generator. And um, as you can see there, it does do some filtering, um, but it's not a significant difference as opposed to what we saw originally. Um, however, the, um, the signal is still out of phase with the original one, as you can see from channel A and B. So have you ever get a neighbor that complains, hey, your radio's uh, messing up something in my house? This may be the first thing to go to. Join me this weekend for 100 Watts and Wires Fallout, uh, October 11th through the 13th. It's an on-air activity. Uh, gives us a chance to get outside one more time before the snow flies and uh, get on the air. Uh, it's not a contest, it's an activity. However, if you do submit a log and it has more than 25 contact points, you are entered into a random drawing for some great prizes. Uh, I'll be operating as W9KFD along with my daughter uh, from a state park here in Wisconsin, so I hope to see you on the air. Uh, for more information on Fallout, you can go to 100wattsinawire.com. Well, thank you very much, Joe, for uh, supplying that video and um, filling in for the channel uh, during my recent and very brief demise. It's really appreciated. And uh, if you want to see future videos from Joe, uh, leave me a comment below. Uh, we'll make sure to get him uh, fixed up with a better microphone, though. But these low-pass filters, this is a really great station accessory to have. Uh, you can find these used at a ham fest for less than, say, $20, or at least I wouldn't pay more than $20 for one on the used market. You know, usually five, I think I paid like five bucks for this. Um, so they're really, they're really cheap used. Um, great accessory to have, especially if you're going to run with an amplifier, because they're going to they're going to cut those harmonics and um, spurious emissions above 30 megahertz. Uh, not so much of a deal now that we have digital television, but back in the analog days, boy, that was really a um, really a problem. For more articles and information, be sure to check out my blog at www.jpaul-antenna.com. Uh, your support of this channel drives production of future videos. So if you like this video, give me that big thumbs up. Check out some of the other recommended videos. And as always, hit that subscribe button and press the little bell notification. Uh, that's your way to be notified when uh, future videos are released. And that's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9VBR, along with Joe, KD9CGX. Have a great day and 73. I hate you, Michael. I really do.